Hi, What's everyone. Up? How how are all of you doing today? I, I I can't hear your answer, but I hope you're doing well. I can hear. Yeah. What? I can hear them. Oh, what what do they say? Good question. Okay, so that that <laughs> I think you're writing bits that your mouth can't catch <laughs> is what's happening here. So what we've got for you today uh, is our patron pick for this month. Uh, this month, our patrons voted for us to play a game from Emily Short, noted uh, IF author from like circa 2000-ish and and on. Yeah. Uh, they're known for a lot of work, like uh, I believe Counterfeit Monkey is probably, that's the one I had heard of mm. beforehand. Um, a lot of their stories and a lot of, I've, I've never played like an actual like IF game like this before that wasn't AI dungeons where there's no wrong answers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so this is my first time trying something like this. That's cool. So you never played any of like uh, the, what was it? King's Quest or whatever? Any of nope. like those parser nope. games? No. Uh, I, and I know like Hitchhiker's Guide is the one that a lot of people have, have gone back to. And like, no, I've never played anything like that. Mm. This is all a very new experience for me. Alrighty. However, considering how much we play st other IF stuff and like Twine and whatnot on the channel, it felt like felt like a natural fit and since yeah. our patrons voted for it uh a lot of their games are very long um however uh this was one you recognized uh, called galatea yeah i feel like i touched this at one point back in the day like when i was in high school or something and was like huh this if stuff seems interesting and it was interesting but i don't remember anything about it so fair enough I remember it was cool enough that I remembered the names. That's a good sign. That That is, generally speaking, a good sign. So what we're going to do uh, is... Probably type help because we're first-time users. Yeah, that's probably what we're going to do. Uh, Galatea, copyright 2000 uh, through 4 by Emily Short. First-time users should type help. I, I believe I am a first-time user. Um, E-L-P. Enter. <clears throat> This is an exercise in NPC interactivity. There is no puzzle, and there is no set solution, but a number of options with a number of different outcomes. Hints. Ask or tell her about things that you can see, that she mentions, or that you think of yourself. Okay. Interact with her physically. Pause to see if she does anything herself. Repeat actions. The order in which you do things is critical. The character's mood and the prior state of the conversation will determine how she reacts. Verbs. Many standard verbs have been disabled. All of the sensory ones, look, listen, smell, touch, taste, remain as do the NPC interaction verbs, ask, tell, hello, goodbye, and sorry, kiss, hug, and attack. All right then. You may also find useful think in its companion, think about, which will remind you of the state of the conversation on a given topic. The verb recap gives a summary list of topics that you've discussed so far. If she's told you that she said all she knows on that topic, it appears in italics. I'm gonna move the mouse out of the way there so you don't have to look at that. Shortcut. Ask her about and tell her about may be abbreviated to A and T, so A cheese is the same as ask Galatea about cheese. There is an assortment of walkthroughs that, okay, yeah, we don't need them. We're gonna... From how I understand it, this is this game has is rather short, but has a bunch of different endings. Yeah. So I figure what we'll try is we'll see, like we'll fiddle around, see how many of them we can get to. Alrighty. Yeah. So um. <clears throat> the galleries end, unlit, except for the single spotlight, unfurnished, except for the defining swath of black velvet, and a placard on a little stand. On the pedestal is Galatea. Interesting. All right. Let's look at the placard. Uh, well, the lights aren't on. It says it's unlit. Let's look at it anyway. All right. So do I have so, to type in caps here? I'm sure it'll be fine. <clears throat> Large cream letters on a black ground. Number 47, Galatea. White Thesos marble non-commissioned work by the late Pygmalion of Cyprus. The artist has since committed suicide. Mm. Originally, not an animate. Oh, that's important. The, the waking of this piece from its natural state remains unexplained. 
I wonder if we know anything about Pygmalion. Can we think about Pygmalion? Right. Uh, T. Is there a difference between think and think about? It just said think and its companion think about. So that's not that's T, which is to tell. Oh, that's to tell. Did I spell that correctly? It's probably fine regardless of casing on the typing if you're if you're holding shift and stuff. Think about Pygmalion. We have no thoughts on the subject of Pygmalion. <laughs> you might try speaking to me. She prompts. It's not polite m to merely to stare. I've gotten very bored standing here. An attempt to engage the audience, the, pro the proactive element. You frame the words for your review, but you find that you can't get as far as a complete first sentence. There's something he more here. Anxious. Chilly. Visceral. You better pay attention. Well, I didn't realize you were waiting for us to talk to you already. <laughs> well, all right. I'm sorry. Uh, Let's keep looking around. No, what? But, but she, I guess we're going to... Okay. Let's look at the spotlight. I feel like you're giving me bad suggestions here. I, you got to look at all the stuff. Try look at. Uh, yeah. The glare blinds you momentarily. You blink to clear your eyes of the spots. <laughs> I hope you're happy. Yeah, I don't know what I thought would happen. Can we yeah. look at the velvet? Uh, heavy black velvet making her skin seem even paler and more alien by contrast. Hmm. We like. All right. So. Can we scroll up a little bit and see what the other verbs that were suggested are? Yeah. So. Look, look listen, smell, touch, taste. Ask, tell, hello, goodbye, sorry, kiss, hug, attack, and think and think about. Ask and tell. Got it. Hello. I want to taste the placard. <laughs> 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 You've got to use all the senses. Hey, okay. Hello, you say, and then stop. What would you say next? I'm a famous critic. Be on your best behavior. There's no etiquette established. And then it strikes you as strange that you should bother to be concerned. Fortunately, the little awkwardness is, not, is lost on her. Good of you not to walk away again. Uh, what do you mean walk away again? We could ask about again. Like that? Like yeah. that? You can't form your question into words. You become aware of her breathing, the slight expansion of her ribs, the soft exhalation, natural and yet somehow studied. Ah. By oh, the way, she says in a way that utterly fails to be casual. Have you seen the artist out there? My artist, that is. Uh, no... You respond uneasy. You open your mouth and close again. Uh, shall we tell her about Pygmalion? Or about the placard? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. L l uh, what's the tell? It's T. The artist, you say gently. It says on the placard that he has committed suicide. Her head moves as though she were going to turn and look at you properly, but then she thinks better of it. Time passes, but she doesn't move. You just stand there looking uselessly at the back of her head and wishing that she'd turn around. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. What? Wait, oh. there was more that we can now see. You bite back a remark on the virtues of modern feminism. So there, there, there's a line above it. I don't know. Oh. Oh, shit. I didn't see that. Yeah. I don't know. She says in a strained voice. What I am supposed to do now, I only exist because of him, for his sake. You bite back a remark on the virtues of modern feminism. Um... Hmm. Uh... What does she want? Yeah? Yeah, we can try that. You can't form your question. Okay. How about we ask about Pygmalion? What is there to know? She exclaims bitterly. 
What's left to say? He left me here. What use am I without him? I make no sense to anyone but him. Really? I, I almost want to have like a could you elaborate on that option. Uh... You could... We could say sorry. Noni, <laughs> if she gets too difficult, you can always have her reset. <laughs> well, all right, fine. I see you, game. Hmm. What if we ask her about sense? What does she mean, makes sense? Hmm. It make no sense. What if we ask her about herself? Ask her about Galatea. Tell me about yourself, he you prompted. There's nothing to tell, she says. I'm lost without him. Everything that I am comes from his stories and his precepts. Tell us more about pigment. They said to repeat our things sometimes. Sure. There must be more you can tell me about the artist, you press her. Let's scroll. Hmm. Hmm. Let's hit a letter. knew it so when it does the thing where you don't see the prompts then it hasn't finished printing the text cool okay no she remarks her voice is hard if you have any further curiosity on the topic you'll have to ask someone else please just leave me alone now you nod and go she doesn't have the look of someone inclined to talk further fiend well all right then all right, so it looks like we shouldn't tell her about that placard. Yeah, maybe not. Let's restart. <clears throat> you come around a corner, away from the noise of the opening. There's only one exhibit. She stands in the spotlight with her back to you. A sweep of pale hair on her paler skin. A column of emerald silk that ends in a pool at her feet. She might be the model in a perfume ad. The trophy wife at some formal gathering. One of the guests at this very opening, standing on an empty pedestal in some ironic act of artistic deconstruction. You hesitate, about to turn away. Her hand balls into a fist. They told me you were coming. Oh. Uh, so, I would like to taste the placard. <laughs> The idea that someone might come in and find you licking the placard prevents you from carrying out this plan. Uh, can we try it again? <laughs> it was worth a shot. It did say to repeat things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, maybe we don't need the sound effects on tasting the placard. That sounds kind of gross. Hmm. Okay. Well, all right. Um... So let's ask let's ask about Pygmalion without Yeah. I pause. I don't know where he is, she says. Or who, or what, for that matter. He sold me immediately after my waking. While he was carving me, there was no strangeness, but afterward. Uh... Let's ask about afterward. Strangeness? What sort of strangeness? He avoided me. He was uncomfortable. He wouldn't meet my eye. He wouldn't speak to me. I asked him questions. I had just discovered how to speak, but for hours I thought I was getting it wrong since he gave no sign. Finally, I made him talk to me and he told me that he didn't want me to be alive. He hadn't made me to be alive. He asked me, in fact, if I would go back to being a statue. You become aware of her breathing, the slight expansion of her ribs, the soft exhalation, natural and yet somehow studied. I said no. I didn't think it would help. And he sent me away. He didn't want me to be near him if I couldn't be the way he had made me. I have big trans energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, big mood. We're getting a lot we're getting a lot more conversation this time. She's a lot yeah. more talkative. Now that we haven't brought up the fact that Pygmalion is dead. Alright. 
All right. Um. Hmm. We could ask about waking. We could ask about. Let's go about waking. Yeah. What was it like waking up? You ask. She turns, not her whole body, just her head, so that you can see one ear behind the cascade of hair. It was night. I had been able to hear and see for a long time. It was the talking, or the pain of being carved, that made me aware, I think. But one night, he slept in, the, in a corner of the studio. I heard him screaming in his sleep, more loudly than usual, and forgot that I couldn't move, and I just stepped down and woke him. Interesting. What's he screaming about? Oh, she gains confidence as you do not interrupt. At the time, he seemed glad to have me there to listen to him, though I think he thought that I was only another dream. It was only afterward that it became strange. What do you want to? I want. Do you want to ask about the screaming? Yeah, let's ask about screaming. Did he ever say, or could you tell? what it was that was upsetting him so much. This piece is starting to remind you of Gloria del Tredici's victim, focusing attention off the animate onto some hypothetical background figure. No, he didn't say. He told me things about his work, about his childhood, some secrets of a sort, but whatever drove his nightmares and made him mad, whatever made him careless with the chisel and furious... Whatever it was, it had to do with her. Creation and destruction were sides of the same coin. Interesting. What should we ask about? I wonder what it was like being carved. Let's ask about carving. So you remember being carved, you ask. She hunches one shoulder. Better, I dare say, than you remember being born. She replies, her voice low and mocking. So, what was it like? Very well, you say, brushing aside her smugness. What was it like, then? Even as she says it, for a moment you sense something odd about her skin. Get out of here, mouse. It seems to sparkle as though it were made of millions of tiny crystals. An unusual and evocative effect. You haven't seen stone effects in skin since uh, Van Italier's Gargoyle series about 10 years ago. But then the grotesque school is pretty well dead at this point. A pause. You haven't listened, have you? She says. It hurt. Not beyond endurance, but in a way that was frightening. In a way? So she can hurt, huh? Did she say that? She said she just said it hurt. Oh, I, the part where she was saying that we haven't listened, been listening to her. I'm, I didn't want to be rude. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be rude. I'm just like, what? Huh? Where, where she was saying like you haven't listened to have you? I thought that was her way of saying like I've told you this already, my dude. Yeah. Yeah. And I was trying to read up back where she would have told us about that. Okay. Sorry. All right. We, we should ask about hurt. It's interesting that a statue can hurt, huh? You sure, you, you sure she's going to be happy with this conversational topic? Maybe, maybe not. How, how could it have been painful to be carved? He wasn't cutting into you, just around you. That's an interesting angle, huh? Her head moves as though she were going to turn and look at you properly, but then she thinks better of it. The stone beyond the boundary of oneself is numb, but there always comes a time when the chisel or the point reaches down to where feeling begins and strikes. Likewise the drill, and being polished left all my skin burning and itching for days. Oof. Shit, I'm sorry. That sucks. <laughs> right, okay, never mind. You That was bait. All right, fine. That was bait, and I fell for it. <laughs> um... Okay. I guess we could keep asking about process as long as, like, like just as long as she's feeding us new, new, new yeah. details. Just keep like asking about like. Uh, let's ask about the boundary. Yeah. Hmm. No. Yeah, all right. I, I was curious about that, but. 
Oh. We could ask about stone. Then you already existed inside the block. I exist. A nice touch about to Michelangelo. I existed from the time that he began searching for me, she says. Though I don't remember the beginnings well, since I could neither see nor hear, and none of me touched the open air. We could ask about seeing and hearing. Oh, I was going to ask if she was scared. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Hmm. Yeah, well, I guess not. What do you want to ask about? The seeing or the hearing. Have you always been able to hear? As long as I can remember, yes. Though what I heard first was only his voice, and I didn't learn to recognize other sounds until later. She pushes a strand of hair out of her face. To ask about that voice. Hmm. Well, let's ask about seeing. When did you first begin to see? You ask. When was it that your eyes were finished, or could you somehow see before that? Before that? She says. Certainly before he began to drill in the corners. It was a gradual thing. Everything was dim and shadowed, and it grew brighter and sharper the closer he came to the surface of my eyes, until I could recognize colors and know his face. I want to know about his face. Hmm. All right. She did mention some other things, though, like colors. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um. I think she has anything more to say on it. There's nothing else to say. She observes. You've heard what I know. You feel a twinge of disappointment. Other things about this piece are so promising. The meticulous attention to detail on the body, the delicacy of the facial expression, the variability of mood. There are those who would call that inconsistency or a lack of coherent artistic vision, but... You've seen too many pieces, stereotypes made animate. A hint of instability. But, but no piece is going to get a serious, critical reception with such a pathetic database. And that's that. Hmm. So are we meant to take it that this is not, in fact, a statue made by somebody named Pygmalion, but these animates are made to act out a situation, and that's, that's the art form of the day here? And it's kind of commenting on itself and its own limitations as a... Absolutely. Another thing I just noticed, look at the top there. One quarter view. It started saying back view. <gasps> I see. So she's slowly turning towards us as she gets more and more interested. Yeah. I see. Okay. Um, How do you feel about existence? Let's get all existential up in here. How do you feel about yourself as an agent able to ex exercise? Yeah. We could ask about life. What do you know about life? You ask her. General questions. You can almost always find ones that haven't been anticipated. Nothing. She says. Except what I saw of his, and that seldom made any sense to me. He told me that people are born, and that they die, and that there are stages in between. Childhood, adolescence. I asked him why he didn't carve me as a child, so that I could grow up. There is a pregnant pause. I never heard him laugh so hard as when I asked that, and... He said that I certainly had the brain of a child. You take a deep breath. Are you really sorry, you ask, that you were never in a child's body? It's not always pleasant, being weaker and smaller and having p people treat you as though you're less. Romantic illusions of childhood aside, it's not something I would choose to go back to. That may be, but it's another way in which I'll never be like other people or understand them. She says other people quite naturally. She continues only with effort. Where everyone else has common history, I have things that only I understand and that I could only hope to explain to him. Let's see. I want to know what you think about other people. Yeah. How about oh. history? What do you think personality comes from? You ask. Memories. She says. And stories, I suppose. The things that he told me. In a sense, I suppose he partly gave me his personality and 
In the places where he didn't tell me everything, there are gaps. Certainly there are days when I feel more like him than like myself. Oh, interesting. We could ask about those memories or stories. When he talked about the past, what did he say? Or was he specific? The air conditioning hum setting a ripple through the velvet curtain. Oh, he was specific. That seems like a good time to ask again. Yeah, I was gonna... Is it? Yeah. Because it seems like she really does... Like, that seems like a way of being like, don't ask it, but I don't want to... Let's find out. All right. I've said everything I know. Hmm. What about stories? What kind of... What kinds of things did he tell you by way of instruction? There were his stories about the gods, of course. She remarks, very quietly. Which I believe were intended to teach me about how people think and what forces control them. And then there were his personal memories, things about his travels, for instance, and a large selection of maxims, some of which I'm not sure he meant seriously. Hmm. He's got a lot of stuff to ask about there. That's about the travels. Pygmalion travel much? All over Europe and America, certainly, though I think he might have gotten other places than that. The way he described it, he was looking for something. He liked to go to museums, which isn't really surprising, I guess, but that wasn't what he was trying to find. And he liked talking to strangers, but I don't think that was what he was looking for either. Maybe a sensation, a kind of Newman. Certainly, there were some memories that he kept coming back to, that he cared about, that stood out in his mind. (sighs) Tell us about that Newman. What's Newman, you ask? She pauses, thoughtful. I don't know how to answer that, she says eventually. I always knew what words meant when my artist spoke them to me, and I know this one too, but... It doesn't have an easy connection to other concepts that he gave me. I suppose the fairest explanation is that it's the quality of divinity. Power, wonder, majesty, mysterious significance. None of those words quite gets it, but that's as close as I can come to a definition. Fair enough. Hmm... I want to. What did? What did, I want to know what she thinks Pygmalion was looking for. Mm. What if we asked her about Pygmalion again? Yeah, we can try. Tell me what you do know about him. You prompt. He hated people, though I think he was also quite lonely. It was a question of not having patience for anyone. Very quietly. If anyone tried to come up to the studio, he'd get out his shotgun and fire into the air until they got the idea. The woman didn't even bring milk if she knew he was there. They had a system of leaving things for each other so that they didn't have to meet. And when he sold me, it was the same. He wrote letters, made arrangements, did not even stay with me when they came to look me over. I see Pygmalion has finally achieved the enviable status of not being witnessed. (laughs) Uh, all right. The woman, huh? Yeah. What about this woman who uh, brought the food to the studio, you ask? Did you ever talk to her? Galatea laughs, surprised. Of course not. She would have been frightened out of her senses. She knew what I was. Well, she knew what I was supposed to be, anyway. Speaking to her would probably have sent her down to the church to get me exercised. Church, huh? Yeah, we should ask about that. Do you want to ask about the woman again? Or church. That's a subject he avoided quite thoroughly. All right, fair enough. Anything else you can tell us about the woman? I've said everything I know. No doubt. You suppress a weary sigh. Uh, that's about his letters. No. All right. What about supposed to be?
Hmm. Uh, well, if we're running dry on this one, can we jump back and ask about the gods? Yeah, let's do that. Do you believe in God or gods, you ask? Or universal forces? He told me that there are gods, like the ones who lived on Thesos, where I was quarried, or on the citadels of the old cities, or in the sea. He told me stories about them, their exploits, and how they went to war, and how they fell in love. The air conditioning hums, sending a ripple through the velvet curtain. There were nights when he would pour out the first of the wine to one of them, to the muses, to Aphrodite the Cyprian, to Apollo. He said prayers, and he made me be silent. To say the wrong thing to the gods, he said, is at least as bad as not to speak to them at all. Hmm. So that gives us a lot of things to ask about. Yeah. What do you know about Thesos? Let's we'll start at the top. Yeah. Here. It's an island off the Chersonese, settled long ago, with the sanctuaries of the old gods still on it. A pause. I don't remember it, she adds as an afterthought. But he used to tell me about it. He used to tell you about it. Could you tell us more about that then? Oh, okay. There's nothing else to say. She observes. You've heard what I know. No doubt. You suppress a weary sigh. Fair enough. All right. Uh, Plenty of other things there in that. Yeah, the old city. The gods lived in the old cities and protected them. Athena in Athens, Hera in Sparta, and what the people needed they could provide if fate did not prevent them. She pauses and you think that she's finished. She shifts so that she's now standing in profile to you, facing the blank wall. There's a wiry tension in the set of her shoulders. You don't have any such thing in this city, do you? Or you don't know if you do. I've seen what your statues depict. Fat men in suits. Let's tell her about statues. What about the city? Huh. Uh. Well, that wasn't what I, I meant to kind of go on. I want to ask her more about the gods again, but okay. <sighs> what do you know about sculpture? You ask. What? You think because I'm a statue, I'm an expert? I've barely seen anything but myself. Only the plaster model that he used to plan me out. There's no color in her voice at all. I think he had some other pieces that he'd worked on around the studio, but I never got to see them. By the time my sight was fully developed, they were gone. Fair enough. Okay. Well, let's not bring that up again. Yeah. We could ask about any number of the gods that she mentioned. Yeah, or the prayers. let's talk about Athena. Yeah. Or, or... What do you know about Athena? Not terribly much, she says. He had no use for her. Said she was clever and soulless, and that the world needed no more cold women than it already contained. Oof. I'll elaborate on cold women. Oh, okay. What about Hera? Hera is the goddess of matrimony and the home, Zeus's wife and sister, and an incredibly jealous woman. And that's all I know on the topic. Fair enough. We could ask about Zeus. What do you know about Zeus? He was the father of the gods, of course. She comments. Perpetually feuding with his wife Hera, always off sleeping with mortal women, but... Also a god of justice who punished wrongdoing with a bolt of lightning. All right. Interesting take. What about ask let's ask about justice. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. What do you have on the concept of justice? That assumes that there is an absolute justice that can be supported. What about the mitigating circumstances? The situations for which there are no right answers? Then you need the wisdom of Athena. The system is complex and interdependent. Tell me about the system. Let's ask about wisdom. Hmm. Well, we could ask about the cities. We could ask about Athens or Sparta. The birthplace of real civilization. Also a polluted sinkhole. Take your pick. Fair enough. 
We're talking um, about civilization. You see, we've gotten her to face profile now. Yeah. You realize, of course, that when I mention things like that, it's straight quotation. Remarks I heard while I was being carved. I don't really know anything about it, so don't challenge me. <laughs> Coward. What? What is the subtext to this? <laughs> Where where do we get off calling her a coward? <laughs> and where does she get off being like, don't challenge me on this? I don't know. What? Let's ask about Sparta. Sure. Athens' other half. Sometimes enemy, sometimes ally. Always alien. Fair enough. The muses were mentioned. Yeah, tell us about the muses. What did he tell you about the muses? An artist's idea of his own inspiration is usually fascinating, though sadly incomplete. He said that they were the only gods who had not deserted him entirely. He told me that they gave him the means to face the other forms of madness. And though I sometimes wondered what that meant, I'm glad he felt so. Tell us about that madness, please. There are four sorts of madness that the gods send, she says. The madness of drink, that's from Dionysus. The madness of prophecy, which is of Apollo. The madness of love, which comes from Aphrodite. And the madness of creation, which is the inspiration of the muse. The muses. A wry half smile. To the best of my knowledge, he did not have a drinking problem. Fair enough. Let's ask about some of those other things that were mentioned there then. We got some new names. Tell me about Dionysus. She turns again, almost fully towards you, though she can't seem to actually look at you. Her face is still turned toward the side. God of wine and drama, she replies smoothly. And a dangerous Eastern influence as well. Elusive, able to create illusions. A breaker of bonds, a bringer of freedom, a force for anarchy and the end of social order. What? Tell me about this anarchy. So... Anarchy is somehow a good thing. Not all the aspects of all the gods are good. Poseidon is a force of raw power, often destructive. Certainly widowing enough sailors. All right, all right. Interesting that Dionysus got her attention as, uh, as well. Do you ever drink? No, I don't need to eat or drink. Fair enough. We could ask about wine or drama. I only know a little bit about Greek theater. Not enough to interest you. You'd be better off reading a book. Yeah, okay, you know what, fair. Let's ask about wine specifically. Okay. You have more or less exhausted the subject, haven't you? How about illusions? Why would you want a god of illusion? You ask, bringing the conversation back to an earlier point. Perhaps illusion is not quite the right word. Many of his tricks involve a shift in perception. What you see is a spiritual truth to which the overly literal are blind, but there is considerable danger involved. If you don't treat the vision with respect, the result is not understanding, but insanity. Ah, uh, you know, there's an old maxim. Kind of harkens back to that. Yeah? Yeah, has to do with, uh, with love. Oh, yeah, huh, funny that. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Breaker of bonds. A bringer of freedom. Breaker of bonds. Something about bonds. What sort of freedom is it that Dionysus brings? I assume he didn't go around freeing slaves. The end of cares, she says. No pain, no grief, no constraint, no stiffness or inhibition. No inhibitions or constraints, but sounds a bit dangerous to me. She laughs. Dangerous. All the gods are dangerous, but the idea is to get outside the boundaries of yourself, not to be trapped by your fears and your habits. Hmm. So in order to gain freedom, you first surrender your will, you say. That doesn't sound like an entirely wise exchange. What is freedom if you have no control over where it leads you? There is a price to everything. Tell me about that price. Hmm. Nope. You ask about freedom, and she shrugs. 
Is there some particular aspect that you're interested in? Because you've already heard my basic take on the subject. What do you mean to surrender? We could ask about the will. Okay. Mm, okay. Maybe that's maybe that's exhausted the Dionysus tree. We could ask about Aphrodite. See if she has anything to say about love. And what, what do you know of Aphrodite? There's a long silence, a stillness in the room. Let's not interrupt. The goddess of love, she says, finally. And the source of all generation. <sighs> right, it didn't take her that long to come up with that textbook definition. Glitch in, glitch in the neural programming, perhaps? Let's ask about love. And what do you know about love? As long as you're... Catechizing? Catech I never pronounced that word aloud. As long as or you're... Or is cat it catechizing? Catechizing? I can't, I can't remember. I don't know... I if have never said this word aloud with my mouth flaps before. Because I know catechism. Okay, so let's go with right? catechizing. Yeah, yeah. Or is it catechism? Damn it. I... I I think you're right. I'm a bad, bad Catholic. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you're talking to the Methodist here. I think I'm a worse Catholic than you are. As long as you're catechizing her, you might as well be thorough. That it makes people behave like idiots. She replies harshly. That it takes more than it gives. Tell me more. All right. Let's ask about generation that she mentioned. Where? Source of all generation when we asked about Aphrodite. Okay. Well, she doesn't seem to have too much to say about Aphrodite, huh? Apollo sound. Oh, she does you know, have more. I was going to say, she seemed very purposefully reticent. Yeah. Aphrodite sounds like a harmless and pleasant sort. She turns to face you and a rustle of resettling skirts. Pleasant and harmless. She repeats in a dull voice. She's the one who sent Helen to Troy. She's the one who made Zeus chase after all sorts of mortal women to their disadvantage in Hera's fury. If it weren't for her and her tricks and her cruelty. She pauses, her eyes flickering up to something behind you. You turn. <clears throat> it is unwise says the newcomer, to rail against the gods. <laughs> Especially against those who have done you favors. She walks toward where you are standing. From a distance, she looks like one of the gallery owners, but when she is beside you, you realize that this is an illusion. Close up, you notice how tall she is and how the light seems to follow her of its own accord. There's a smell of something sweet and unfamiliar. You move back, nervous, but the goddess hardly seems to notice you. She touches Galatea with one finger, and instantly the life is gone from her. There is only a statue on the pedestal. Perfect and still. So, that... Oh. Yeah, there was, there was more. You killed her! You exclaim, horrified. The golden gaze turns on you. Lovely. Quelling. Miserable. You fall silent. The end. Damn, so it seems like that's and that's certainly an ending. Okay, so don't ask about love, I guess. Don't ask about Aphrodite. Yeah. What the hell, Aphrodite? Interesting. Aphrodite has done her favors, huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Can we try one more go here? Yeah. Yeah? They told me you were coming. All right. Let's go about the gallery. Yeah. Well, fuck. <laughs> We can start with hello. Hello. Hello, you say, and stop. What would you say next? I'm a famous critic, be on your best behavior. 
there's no etiquette established, and then it strikes you as strange that you should bother to be concerned. Fortunately, the little awkwardness is lost on her. Good of you not to walk away again, she replies. Again? Yeah, this is the same thing she ha said the last time we said hello. And we also did this exact did we, thing. We did that exact thing? Yep. Okay. Uh, you know what we haven't done yet? What? We haven't looked at Galatea. What? Look at. She is facing away from you. You cannot see her face, only her hair and the line of her shoulder. It's hard to know what she's looking at, the velvet backdrop if she has her eyes open, but there's not much to see in that. Mostly, it's obvious she is not looking at you. Her green dress widens out at the knee, falling over the pedestal on which she stands in a way that could probably be very awkward if she wanted to move. You become aware of her breathing, the slight expansion of her ribs, the soft exhalation, natural and yet somehow studied. Ah, by the way, she says in a way that utterly fails to be casual. Have you seen the artist out there? My artist, that is. No, I don't think so. What does your artist look like? Black hair, she says, and stops. Never mind, he's not here. He wouldn't have come. Tell me about your artist. Her head moves, as though she were going to turn around and look at you properly, but then she thinks better of it. I don't know where he is. She remarks. Or who, or what, for that matter. He sold me immediately after my waking. While he was carving me, there was no strangeness, but afterwards... Strangeness? Yes, we got this last time. We I don't know about... where he is or who. You know. Did yeah. we ask about the strangeness? Yep. Okay. Maybe we should do it again, though, because it, it took us down a good path. I don't want to just rehash. Yeah, this is the same. What, what? about speaking? Let's ask about speaking. When did you first start to be able to speak, you ask? I've always understood words. They were the first thing I knew of. Very quietly. But actually to speak, not until I woke up. Okay. We've gone through her history a lot. Yeah. Want to see what happens if we pull something just out of the blue? Sure. Like what? Uh, tell us about Dionysus. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about Dionysus. Hey, this is the same. So this is the same. Okay. That's cool. Well, so I, I was wondering whether or not she would comment on if we if we like pulled something out of the fucking blue. Let's ask about travel. That seemed to be a thing that was in a specific conversation tree. Which do you mean, her journey or the honors travels? Oh. How did you get here from uh, Cyprus? Oh, I flew. They had me in a crate, which was uncomfortable and cold as well, but it was the only way for them to get me through customs. Because, of course, since I wasn't born anywhere, I didn't have a passport. I did my best to look still and motionless when customs checked me. Fortunately, they weren't very thorough. Yeah, that's the same. All right. Uh, let's ask about Cyprus. What do you remember of Cyprus? Very little, except the studio itself. The only time I left it, except to stand out in the garden and look at the ocean after I woke up, I was packed up in my crate for travel. So I didn't exactly get a clear view of the countryside. Fair enough. There's a couple things to ask about there. How do you feel about the crate? All right. How about the garden? Yeah, why'd you go to the garden? So we kept a garden. Kept would be too strong a word. There was an area beside the studio which contained plants and which received light. She says, there's a suppressed mirth in her voice. It grew more or less at will. A few vegetables, a few flowers, a lot of wild things that weren't invited. Not much good for food, but it certainly smelled good on a warm evening. Hmm. There's a lot of new stuff there. Tell me about those vegetables. 
I only know a few vegetables by sight, and none by name, I'm afraid, which probably has to do with not having to eat. Fair enough. How about the flowers? I don't know much about flowers, wild or tame. By the time I was fully awake, most of them had faded from the, faded from the garden. All right. And how about the ocean? You seem to really fixate on looking at the ocean. I love the ocean, she says, because it is the first thing beyond myself and him that seemed alive. I could see it through the windows of the studio when he was carving me, and I thought, by the way the ro- waves rose and fell, that it breathed as we did. We should ask about breathing. Breathing keeps coming up. You're right, absolutely. I notice that you do breathe. I don't have to. I... She laughs a little self-consciously. Actually, I taught myself how watching him. I noticed that he did it and decided that I should figure out how it worked. Once I began, I found it soothing, but not necessary. Hmm. Let's ask about soothing. Why is breathing soothing? Okay. Can we ask about smell? That's a sense that we had not asked before. So you do have a sense of smell as well? Certainly. She says. Whichever god woke me from the stone was thorough. We know which god that is. Yep. So we're going to... We can, we should totally ask about gods again, but we should totally not go down the Aphrodite path. Okay, what else comes up here? We've asked about Thesos, we've asked about I guess that makes sense since Aphrodite is from Cyprus as well. Yeah, let's ask about Apollo. We didn't ask about Apollo. We're still only at a one quarter view this time. Yeah, because we're going much. Uh, I don't know if it's a measure of like time spent on the conversation or of like certain beats that you're hitting. I don't know. Yeah, could be. What did he tell you about Apollo? That he is an archer, of course. She says. And a prophet. The god of the sun, the representative of s- civilized song, the opposite of Dionysus. A pause. He also warned me not to trust Apollo. He said he'd tried and found it ineffective. Civilization only goes so deep, and under that is mere anarchy, as he put it. As an apparent afterthought, she adds, Dionysus presided at Delphi three months of the year, you know? Apollo did not hold even his most sacred precinct absolutely. Tell us about Delphi. Delphi? What was that? It was the Oracle of the Pythia, where she sat muttering gibberish into the smoke so that the priests could make hexameters out of what she said. The Pythia? Oh. The Pythia? She was a peasant woman, illiterate, over 50 years old. Someone chosen because she had no family of note, no political ties, no ability to receive messages or participate in intrigue. Do you have any intrigue? Nope. Okay. Hmm. The heck is a hexam- hexameter? The meter used by, for example, Homer. Tell us about Homer. <laughs> I watched you type homo. <laughs> oh, did I? Yeah, you, uh, you typed homo to start. Oh, whoops, my bad. She plainly takes your mythological ignorance in stride by this point. An epic poet. Okay. So okay. she doesn't think highly of us because we keep asking about really basic stuff. Okay, let's talk about poetry, though. She wrote poetry. Hmm. Okay, mm. maybe not. What if we do the Dionysus path again? Let's ask about Dionysus and then the various things. Well, we already asked about Dionysus. What did we... Oh, did we not ask about... So we just told about Dionysus. That's what T does. If you want to think about, it'll be think about. Wine of theater, anarchy, and illusion, the destruction of order. Let's ask about those things like we did last time. In order? Sure. Yep, so that's the same. All right, okay, yep. We can ask about theater. Uh, yep, yeah, okay. Oh. Okay, yeah, 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 and illusion. Okay. I noticed that thinking about tends to like not narrow down like the keywords to focus in on. Yeah. Yeah, let's ask that. Why not? <sighs> um. Mm. It says you can't form your question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And yeah. This is new. Okay. <clears throat> You can't form your question into words. 
She shifts so that she is now standing in profile to you, facing the blank wall. There's a wiry tension in the set of her shoulders. It's related to the idea of masks and drama, she remarks. She sounds as you imagine the stone might sound if it could speak. Disguised identity, cross-dressing, all those things that let you behave outside the rules, redefine your identity for yourself, encourage people to treat you in ways they otherwise might not. You find yourself staring at her curiously. What would she know about masks and disguises? What do you have to say about identity? I want to hear what she says about identity first. Is there something you're trying to tell me? You ask suspiciously. Speaking of stepping out of character. She turns to face you in a rustle of resettling skirts. For a moment, she doesn't say anything, and you wonder if you've made a mistake. And then you remember an article you were reading last month. You're an avatar! You've got someone controlling you in real time! The reply when it comes is not from Galatea. The velvet curtain moves violently. Tiny gold tacks shower out of the wall. Half the backdrop wrenches free thanks to the opening of a door beyond. Hi, says the newcomer. We hold the great and powerful Oz. She adds under her breath. What? You stare down at her. She's rather short, a little on the dumpy side, and dressed in a ripped pair of blue jeans. An unlikely source for that performance you just observed. She cocks her head to one side. Sorry to disappoint, she says with a smile. It was an experiment that, well, seemed like a good idea at the time. I was curious what people would say. Hope you don't take it personally. Huh. You glance at Galatea, lifeless now that her controls have been switched off, and then back at the artist. You could start by telling me your real name. Interesting. What the hell? Yeah, we've had three very different endings, huh? What? What on earth? I don't know what to make of that. This is cool, huh? Yeah. Every time we get to... Okay, okay, okay. Let's do another... Let's do... Let, let me Let me just double check something. Let's. I think we should do one more, probably. Yeah, let's do one more. Let's do it. Let's do it. We should try thinking more this time, I bet. Let's just think. Your mind is a blank slate. Guess we got a hello. Let's say hello and then ask about the curtain. Yeah. She turns. Not her whole body, just her head, so that you can see one ear behind the cascade of hair. What's so fast? No, 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 no. That, that's, that's... Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. What's so fascinating about the curtain that it merits your fixed attention? She laughs, turns a bit towards you, and seems to relax a shade. Nothing. She ex- says. Except that it presents no surprises. You raise an eyebrow, processing humor in an apparently spontaneous manner as a rarity. Let's ask about surprises. Or humor. Hmm. Let's look at Galatea now that she's turned a little bit. (coughs) Though she has her back to you, her head is turned somewhat, offering a half view of cheek and ear. Let's look at the curtain ourselves. Heavy black velvet, making her skin seem even paler and more alien by contrast. I see. Let's ask her about her dress. She shrugs in it. It looks odd, doesn't it? She says. I insisted on clothes and they bought me this. What would she prefer? Or clothes. Who decided what you would wear? Oh, they did. My owners. I would have chosen something a bit more comfortable, and with the fabric in a useful location. There's so much below the knee, you'd think they could have spared some for my shoulders. Hmm, owners? What are your owners like? Aren't they out there in the other room? She asks, surprised. That's where they said they were going to be. Yes, of course, you say quickly, a pause. I was wondering about your impressions of them. Obviously, you must have a different perspective than I could. 
She shrugs. I know too little about people to come to any kind of conclusion, and they don't talk to me much. No one does these days. Oh, okay. That's that's that one. Um, what do you think about people? Hmm. What about? Uh, okay. Can we ask about travel again? But this time we're gonna do the artist travels. Did uh, Pygmalion travel much? Yeah, because we've we've at, we've done this one. Yeah. But let's ask about some of the things that came up here. We can ask about Europe or America or museums. Let's ask about his time in America. Buy a map. <laughs> All right, well. Let's ask about some of the other ones. Like, uh... Yeah, fair enough. Museums, strangers, other things come up. What if we just think now that we've got some stuff in our head? <laughs> well, but what if we think about Pygmalion? What if we think about Galatea? A bit of an enigma, really. A complex piece by someone you've never heard of, which suggests a pseudonym or perhaps a hoax. Except, of course, that she doesn't remind you of the work of anyone in particular. There are superficial resemblances here and there. On the whole, though, she is unique. Hmm. Uh, yep. We've had this. Yep. Okay. Um... What about Maxime's? She had mentioned that the artist talked about. Do you remember any of Pygmalion's sayings in particular? He pauses for a moment. He had some choice things to say about the Turkish. She says. But I suppose that those don't count. I guess things like mourning is the wisest advisor and a man must be either ignorant or brave. Some I didn't understand. Some I still don't understand. Hmm. Any more about anything else to say on the subject? Hmm. Hmm, okay. What if we asked about... Ignorance. I wanna yeah. Ask. Bravery. Um. What if we ask about Greece generally? By a map? Fair enough. Nope. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Morning is the wisest advisor. Oh, and instead it does the having woken. Okay, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Did we ask her what she thinks about the gallery? Hmm. What if we think about Maxime's? Hmm. Sounds as though he had a collection of trite proverbs and standard sayings that he spewed on occasion. Something doesn't hold your interest sufficiently for you to remember much detail. Hmm. What do you think about death? Her head moves, as though she were going to turn and look at you properly, but then she thinks better of it. Mine or yours? Before you can answer, she lifts one shoulder in a delicate shrug. It doesn't matter which you mean, since I know nothing about either. You will go your way when the time comes, and I... Who can die who is not alive? Hmm. Or life. Oh, yep. We've yeah, done yeah, this. yeah. Um... Hmm. Okay. What if we just try asking about some random stabs in the dark, like yeah. music 
We haven't we haven't asked anything about music. Okay, nothing. Let's see. Hmm. What do you think about art? In the abstract? She moves her arm, just a slight movement. It comes into an unexpectedly graceful position. Art, not nature. If you'd been about to forget that as if you'd been about to forget that, she has been a statue. She began as a statue. Fuck, I cannot read tonight. I got caught in that garden bath. <laughs> Not much. I've seen very few pieces, myself and the murals at the airport. And the latter, I am led to believe, do not quite count. Really? We should ask about the murals. Hmm. What about the airport? Yep, okay. Tell me about customs. What was it like going through customs? I held very still and didn't breathe. She says. And I let myself look like a statue again. Before your eyes, her skin seems to grow harder, less receptive, and her hair seems like a single piece. Then the illusion fades. You stand there staring for another moment. Very odd effect, that. <laughs> What if we ask about her skin? It, oh. took a, yeah. it took a lot of polishing. Hours on a spot no broader than my shoulder blade. But otherwise it would have been all ridged. How was the polishing? So being polished was excruciating. It doesn't hurt at first the way it hurts being chipped at. But then it abrades and begins to stick. She hunches one shoulder. If he hadn't talked to me while it was going on, I think I would have gone mad. That's when I learned the most from him. It was more effort working with the point or the chisel. I don't know if you know this, but it takes a lot of strength to hammer marble, and even more if it's unusually hard marble. Hard bull, as they call it. <laughs> but the polishing left him with more breath to talk. Have you noticed something about her gestures? Mm, no. Hunches one shoulder, shrugs with one shoulder. Shoulders, shoulders, shoulders. She just shrugs. Hmm. Interesting. Are you in pain? What do you know of pain, you ask? Have you ever been hurt? Can you be? Yeah, we asked this one. Okay. What about the chisel? What is a chisel? You ask. She makes a hesitant gesture with her fingers, describing a flat blade at the end of a long shaft, and then her hand returns to its former pose. It slides over you, taking away the excess until it comes in contact with the skin. A pause. Though, she adds after a pause, I'm sure that is not how an expert would describe it. Think about experts. Alright. What do you think about skin? Alright, fair enough. What about your skin? Nope. Mm. Tell me about your hair. She touches the end of one strand self consciously, as though surprised to find it there, and then shrugs. It is just like anyone else's, she says. I have to wash it every day and brush it, and that, I can tell you, is not much fun. It's very fine, see? She loops a bit around her finger and lets it go. And it ties itself in knots when I'm asleep. <laughs> she sleeps. And do you have to sleep? She shifts so that she is now standing in profile to you facing the blank wall. There's a wiry tension in the set of her shoulders. I don't have to. She says. In the sense of getting tired. I'm not sure what tired feels like, actually, but there are times when I can't think anymore, don't want to see anything else, and oblivion sounds greatly preferable. Oh. Let's ask about it again. Hmm. All right. Can we look at the oblivion. wall? Oblivion. Oh, what? Oh, yeah, we can ask about oblivion. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at the north wall. It's 
let's oh. try look at it, looking at it. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> I wonder if any of the walls have something special about it. That's I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. No. Let's ask her about the wall. Lamau. Lamau. Okay. Um. Does she have tension? Dress? Like a shoulder thing. That tends to be what I think of at first. What if we look at shoulders? Left bare by the gown. Wrongly perfect. Can we look at Galatea again? Her body may be turned towards you, but she still won't look at you. Her gaze is fixed somewhere on the blank wall. Her patrician nose, the slight compression of the mouth, the line of slender throat and chin show sharp and cold against the velvet drapery. Hmm. 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 Trying to think, what are some other random shot in the darks that we can toss? Yeah. What do you think about cre the act of creation? No? Nope. All right. What do you think about being a woman? Nope. Mm. All right. Well. Hmm. Hmm. Well, <laughs> worth a shot. <laughs> it was worth a shot, right? Ask Galatea about interactive fiction. Well, it was worth a shot. Let's think about animate. Seems these days that you don't think of anything else. Sometimes when you're in the middle of a conversation with a real person, you find yourself mentally critiquing their dialogue designer. Wishing that someone had taken a little more care with the skin tone. A little twisted, maybe, but... The study of animate design has actually led to a new understanding of how con conversational pragmatics work. You only realize how many rules govern an interaction when you see them violated. Hmm. Shit. We haven't thought about things in a while. Do you think Galate is lonely? He didn't have any friends that you know of. Not very many people lived up to his standards, I think. He had very little tolerance for ignorance or superstition or... Well, he had very little tolerance. Perhaps part of his artistic temperament. Tell us about that tolerance. About the superstition or the ignorance. Oh, that's... It's ignorance. Yeah. Hmm. How about the temperament? At one point in the past, she mentioned that he prayed to the gods. What if we ask about prayers? Explain to me what Pygmalion thought about prayer. I don't know that I can exactly offer a full explanation of his beliefs. She remarks. Her voice doesn't sound like it's coming from a human throat at all. But to put it simply, he told me once that all the gods require our observance since to ignore them is to bring down anger, but that some gods are special to some men. Also, that if you want something specific, you must ask the right one. Did he also mention how the music has stopped playing a while ago and they haven't fixed that yet? Lamau. Lamau. I didn't go to church, if that's what you mean. He had no use for that. We could hear the ringing of the church bell up at the studio, but he always said that that was a sop for people who didn't dare take on the gods in their raw form. As pagan and unkind. A wry smile crosses her face. As you may have gathered, he wasn't exactly an optimist. Hmm. Of a church. Well, it's a subject yep. he avoided quite thoroughly. What if we ask about his shotgun? He kept it to scare people with. It wasn't for real use. Hmm. Hmm, okay. 
Okay. What if we ask about Plato? Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Tell me about the gods again. Muses, Aphrodite, yep. Apollo. We know that Aphrodite and Apollo take us down certain paths. Yep. Athena in Athens, Hera in Sparta. Oh, let's look at her again, because she's in three-quarter view now. Yeah, let's also think about statues. Sculpture is not your favorite medium, though it comes closer than painting. She blinks once without turning towards you. What do you believe? She asks suddenly. Do you worship fat men in suits? You stifle the inclination to laugh. I'm not on the side of the establishment, if that's what you mean. Which of course it isn't, but you don't care to answer the question on her terms. Interesting. Let's look at That's her That's the first time she's asked us a question. Yeah. Face is in three-quarter of you now. The effect is softer than you would have expected. There's a shyness in the mouth that reminds you of a Botticelli virgin, bashful in the gaze of Gabriel, but the eyes are lidded and oblique. Hmm. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, what are, what is what is the establishment? I have no opinions on the subject. Okay, let's ask her about establishment. <laughs> Fair enough. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm trying not to just, like, immediately railroad us down the ones we've already been down, you know? Yeah. What if we think about Dionysus or one of those? Oh, we've already done Think About Dionysus. Oh, we also haven't encountered them. Let's do Think About Gods. Okay. Yeah, we've asked about some of those. All, All right. of them, in fact. Hmm. Hmm. Tell me more about Apollo. That was the one that took us down that path, right? No, it wasn't. Dionysus did. Yeah. Okay. What? We ask her about civilization. We have. I wonder if it'll be different this time. Same. Yep. Let's ask about prophecy or prophets. All right. I don't know much of prophecy, she says. It was not a talent my artist possessed, though he liked to claim he knew what was coming. He had no idea whatever. He was constantly being surprised. But there were times when he ranged around muttering to himself about what was to come, which was his cynicism talking or despair. Hmm. What if we ask about Pygmalion again now, now that we've got her in three-quarter view? Okay, that's the same. Yep. Let's ask about... Did we ask about the letters? We didn't ask about the letters. Okay. Uh -huh. What if we think about Pygmalion? Hmm. Got no opinions. Okay. What if we think about Galatea now? Okay, that's the same. Wait, no, it's not. This is different. You're not sure what to think. She looks like an animate, mostly. She acts like one. Sometimes she's, an an she's in an animate exhibit in one of the best reputed galleries in the country. She's also an advanced piece, if she's a piece at all, by an artist, one artist, not a workshop or team, of whom you have never heard before. And you've heard of everyone. What if we think about ourself? Think about self. Lamau. Lol. What if we tell Galatea about ourselves? Which is T. T. 
Where would you begin? And what context would you have for anything you could say? She has no childhood, no history, no network or passions and friends. The persistent inclination to tell her such things takes you by surprise. Animates are notoriously poor at processing uncontextualized personal information, and you know better than to waste your time. But this piece of logic doesn't banish the desire to confide in her. Let's keep trying again. Yeah. Where do you want to start? Childhood, your family, your job? Here we go. Yeah. Oh, let's, let's, let's ask her about childhood and then tell her about, oh, let's ask about, oh, that's new stuff. What was his childhood like? You Unhappy. Ask. She says, her voice is dry and almost gritty. His mother died when he was very young and his father was not a kind man. Too little money and too little sympathy. As soon as he was old enough, he started to travel around when he was only 15 or 16, I think. Visiting people he knew at first, but when that didn't work out, going farther afield. Mm. And we can ask about the childhood. Huh, so the childhood is just the childhood. Right, okay. What if we tee your childhood? What if we tee family? Huh. I lived with a bunch of different relatives growing up. My aunt for a while, and then my grandmother for a long time, but with visits to our uncle in the summers. It was <laughs> it was crazy. Did you enjoy it? The air conditioning hums, sending a ripple through the velvet curtain. Yeah, actually, I did. It sounds inhuman to say so, but there were actually times when I was glad that my parents had died, because it meant that I was free. I didn't belong to any one place. I could go where I wanted. Utterly against what a child psychologist would predict, and not the kind of admission you would ordinarily make. You stop a little flustered, but she listens without prejudice. Perhaps because she's too inexperienced to find this kind of thing trite, or perhaps because she really understands how it is to be still and listen. Hmm. Childhood is a loss in private era since your sister died. You think of it seldom and never, not ever, deliberately. So it takes you a moment to begin. You keep it general at first, biographical facts anyone could know. Where you were born and when and what kind of economic background. Where you went to school. It's clear you have her full attention and she turns to face you in a rustle of resettling skirts. She listens intently, expressing no reaction, no judgment, no amusement, no boredom, no distraction. And you find yourself straying into more personal territory. Not dark secrets, but incidents that have no bearing on anyone but you. Standing on the porch of a friend's house while the Santa Ana winds stripped branches off the palm trees and made the telephone poles bend and sway, restless with electricity in the air. The sort of thing that would make a little that would make little impression now, but which at the time seemed wonderful and strange. What's the other part of our life we could tell her about? Job. Actually, I'm a critic. I'm writing a review of the exhibition. And why exactly did you need to get that out in the open? She runs one finger along the fabric of her dress. I see. I suppose in that case I ought to stand in my pose so that you can tell what the artist intended. Moving around ruins the lines, or so I'm told. That's quite all right, you reply. I think I can see the intent. We haven't looked at Galatea while she's facing us yet. Her eyes shine a smoky green, a color almost alien, until she meets your look and smile. Smile. I want to smile back. All right. What if we ask her about her smile? Hmm. What if we think about Galatea? You have a hard time thinking about anything else. She's prickly, but also embarrassingly open. Not exactly easy to read, and she also makes you edgy in some strange ways. What if we ask self? What do you know about me, you ask? I told you you were coming. Does that mean you were some abstract viewer? Are you really the first this evening to have rounded this particular corner? Nothing. She says. Other than that you have come to look at me. Fair enough. What if we ask about Pygmalion again now that we have her full attention? Hmm. 
What do you think of yourself? Read the placard, she says. That's what it's there for, after all. Yeah, let's yeah. read the placard. We did read the placard already. Yeah, but let's read it again. Okay. Okay, we've asked about each of these things already. Yep. Hmm. Yep. Talking to her is too easy. One thing tumbles out after another. Memories, philosophies, names you haven't spoken for years. She sits down on the pedestal, drawing her knees up to her chest. Have you no respect for that gorgeous dress? None. Her bare feet poke out, and she's painted the toenails a ruddy shade of bronze. And she studies the effect whenever she isn't looking at you. Eventually, she begins to talk, too about her first encounter with Northern Rain, the frustration of trying to watch television in her hotel room. And that's where you find yourselves when the lights blink and the owners come to send everyone home, sitting shoulder to shoulder, sh shading your eyes from that hard down glare. You stand, a happy exhaustion sets in, and you're too tired to be self-conscious about hugging her goodbye and the under the skeptical gaze of the caterers. Huh. Friends. Huh. This is neat. What a neat freaking game this is. This is so cool. It's a it's extremely deep for a game that is about one NPC conversation tree. Yeah. Oh, maybe not the time for a meal music. <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine, uh, given the description mentioned that there were like 70 plus endings or whatever to this, that there is much, much more here that we've barely yeah. that we haven't found. And, like, we were just trying to go off of what we could find here. Like, I'm sure there are some other shots in the dark we could take. Oh, yeah. But. Like, and there yeah. are plenty more games in Emily Short's lengthy career than just yeah. this one. So um, the way we, uh, I, and here's how I would recommend you would you would find more if you want to look up more of uh, Emily Short's games. Uh, I would go to Emily Short's IFDB profile, the Interactive Fiction Database, um, because that contains links to all their games in playable form. Uh, their website is more complete, but doesn't. Uh, not all the links work to playable versions of the games. So that's what I would recommend. And I would recommend you check them out because these are freaking cool. Yeah. I kind of want to try out one of their longer ones in the future. We should. Yeah. That's what I got for you today. I hope you all have a good day. And I hope you all enjoyed it. Like, I, I, li I like it whenever we take the time to get to do a uh, IF piece. And I'm, yeah. Hope our patrons are happy with what with what we picked out as well, because this is certainly unusual, but I very satisfying, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you again to all of our patrons for supporting us another month. Uh <laughs> your support for the channel helps us keep doing all the fun things that we do, and I know that we <laughs> the reason our channel is as big and as good as it is today is because y'all have helped us get here and that means a lot to us so earnestly thank you um we'd also love to give a special by name shout out to the patrons that are i'm jacked in tier including alice Alyssa clarkson reyna snow flurry the fighting doll and wheel baron uh if you would like to support us uh at patreon the, the link should be in the bottom patreon.com slash apr uh what that gets you is that gets you access to a couple of uh, exclusive episodes before they're made available on the main channel and you get to vote each month for an indie creator for us to play a game from, uh, which is why we're playing uh, Galatea by Emily Short right now. <laughs> so if you've got someone like, oh, I'd really love for APR to play a game by my favorite indie dev, then that's one way for you to get us to do it. Yeah. Um, and all the money we make from that goes back into the channel. Um, and like, to, like buying games, um, equipment, uh, and uh, programs, stuff like that, uh, that just helps us keep things moving behind the scenes so thank you thank you smash 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 that like comment and subscribe